everyone. Today is a very special moment because it's a first uh, performance, uh, first recording together with my dear friend uh, Tatiana Man. We met about a year ago and uh, from the first recording uh, and rehearsal actually, we could feel like as if uh, we were playing together like, like for good 20 years. I know, years. right? Absolutely. And uh, we actually even managed to play a few live performances together yeah. and after that we decided, well, uh, we need to start recording and today is, uh, is our first recording of a uh, very special composer, special for all uh, cellists and especially a cellist for Russian school, uh, Karl Davidov. He composed several cello concertos, uh, four uh, of them, and each of them is real gem in a cello repertoire. You know, like we are not as happy as pianists to have so many con concertos, so each uh, good cello concerto is a treasure for us. Our today's selection is very short miniature, and uh, this uh, is a song, actually a song without words, which you can imagine uh, being performed by a vocalist and pianist. Piano part is very much similar to the piano parts found in many songs of the era. So um, they're very supportive, and they're also, um, they propel the melody forward by their rhythmic quality um, and by their rhythmic structures throughout. Perhaps now the best way for us is to perform it for you and then stay uh, after that if you're interested uh, to hear our conversation about this piece. Thank you. 
I'm glad you didn't switch to another channel. <laughs> so here's our little uh, backstage moment of uh, rehearsing. We had to uh, solve several problems. Maybe problem is not the best uh, word to dis describe it. small challenges, collaborative elements. Exactly. So, and always the first challenge is how even to start the piece. And here seems to be very straightforward. This is, uh, since this is a romance, we have to breathe. Mm -hmm. yeah, and we and have to breathe together. Exactly. Uh, honestly, we didn't have to work on that that much, yet uh, it would be important to mention how we did it. So maybe why don't we slightly exaggerate it yes. now? Uh, so in the recording, we didn't do it that much because we trust each other yes. and uh, and for us, it's uh, just important to give a little uh, of hint to each, other, yes. to each other. And of course, so as a pianist, what you're trying to do, so of course I'm watching Maxime, right? So you probably noticed that an exaggerated um, moment here, he moved a little bit and he breathed rather <laughs> loudly, which, you know, I actually prefer. I like, the, then the, I don't have to guess. So with his movement and his loud sound, I was actually matching it. And you, you also saw that he kind of, he made a motion with his bow hand. So I was, I'm watching his body language and I'm listening for him. Although so, I'm trying to hide uh, by right? music and music stand, right. but I guess you have very good imagination. Right, exactly. <laughs> Another interesting thing to figure out for us was phrasing. Uh, if uh, you look at the score, uh, you will see that there, uh, at least in the cello part, there are very few rests. However, if you imagine somebody singing, you could uh, think that uh, there will be just few seconds of singing and then you have to breathe. We had to try it in a, in a different way and uh, only later on we uh, seem to find balance, at least for that matter, mm -hmm. uh, for now. But I'm sure if we play it a uh, month from now, we will be breathing in a different way and phrasing in a different way. One of the uh, way to break it is of course to break it with uh, lower uh, notes. And every time this phrase comes back, we do it again. So in terms of the piano part, how does the piano part support the cello line or the vocal line here? So here, um, at a very simple level, we have two challenges. So the first and the primary challenge in the piano part is the fact that we have thick chords in the right hand, which technically are very heavy for our instrument, right? When we think of chords, we think weight. they would absolutely, for lack of a better word, kill the piano part and they would just negatively affect the, the vocal, the cello part. So this is our first challenge to solve. If you, if you see that these chords are always suspended over the bar line to mitigate their heaviness, the composer was, is very smart, very good. He displaces them by an eighth note, which immediately tells us as the pianist that they should all move forward because they're all pushed over the bar line, right? Number one. Technically, how you would approach it, you would allow a lot of underarm movement, which, would, which forces the arm sideways and which forces the wrist sideways, and which will create this very soft and very legato sound in the chords. So the idea is here between these chords is to connect them in as much as possible, both with the arm and the fingers, and also with a little bit of a pedal. So this is what we're hoping for. That's with the hand and the arm, and to add a little pedal, And that's what, what really helps the cello uh, line, because, uh, because if pianists collaborate in uh, this way, then uh, well, cello has very little to add, and it makes it so easy to perform it. And then the second element I want to draw your attention to has to do with those rests at the beginning of most of the measures. So for instance... Um, What is the issue 
issue there. The issue is that if the pianist pays attention only to the right hand separately and then to the left hand separately, psychologically, those rests will create gaps in the music. Gaps and also hesitations. This is what I mean. I'll exaggerate, of course. And what happens inadvertently, even if those gaps are minuscule, what is going to happen? The time is going to be altered and the cellist is going to have a very difficult time playing with you and little ensemble issues will start creeping up and oftentimes people, um, you know, starting out to play together aren't quite sure why are there ensemble issues even though there's really um, not a ton of challenge here. So always think about it. What am I doing visually that could be affecting my play? So the solution is actually very, very simple. The solution is to connect the right hand to the left hand. And in a sense, oh, there's always the left hand downbeat in every measure, even though there's a rest in the right hand. I will demonstrate what I mean. So one and two. and visual microscopic gap, you really have to look at this texture, not as left hand separately and then right hand separately, but very much as left and right hand all together and not separate visually, emotionally, or physically when you play it, the two hands. In other words, when the right hand has a rest, there is really no rest in your ear because the left hand most of the time has a downbeat. And whenever it doesn't, whenever the left hand is suspended, you really have to, in your head, very clearly count the downbeat to make sure that the time never changes. So I'll quickly demonstrate. interesting how that affects uh, when we uh, me when we play together so now uh, so uh, let's uh, let's and play a first couple of phrases mm -hmm. and now once we put it all together uh, it's kind of a contrast between a very long line in a cello part and seemingly disjointed notes in a piano accompaniment of course disjointed if you don't take care of them, as Tatiana uh, mentions. And when uh, everything comes together, it seems to be just like one instrument or one voice that actually taking care of everything. And that is our final result. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, why don't we now play the first couple of phrases together? Okay. trying to recreate this vocal nature of this piece is uh, that sometimes we have to take advantage of shifts and uh, have different approach to them. Not the instrumental approach, but the vocalist approach. When we are singing, we often try to connect the notes and we take it for granted. Now, uh, using a string instrument, you can always have a, a choice between a stop in the bow and a making shift and then after that restarting the note or trying to connect the notes and when it comes to this connection there are thousands of different ways to do it uh, since this is romantic uh, music uh, usually we are trying to slightly exaggerate it make it sweeter make it more again like a human voice so uh, something like uh, 
like this would be more appropriate. Of course, at times uh, we need to take a little bit more time uh, to do that. This one uh, comes uh, understanding and uh, listening skill. So Tatiana is always uh, listening and we don't even have to talk about this. The same, uh, the same when I hear that there is something interesting uh, harmonically or even melodically in piano part, then I'm not just counting, but I'm uh, following what I hear. And that's a very important chamber music ma uh, making skill. Without that, we'll just be two um, more or less professional musicians <laughs> doing uh, their own stuff. So this is a conversation about the process of uh, music making together. And our goal in our next rehearsals and recordings for you will be to show how we work, uh, show the final result, and hopefully you will benefit from not just listening us playing together, but uh, listening to our conversation. So stay tuned. We will continue playing more chamber music, mostly miniatures, and we'll try to discover new music and share it with you as much as we can. Thank you, Tatiana. Thank you. So uh, stay tuned and see you soon.